What's up everyone? I'm Thanos and today we will travel to Camelot to witness the successor of King Arthur's throne. So, let's dive into the box and see what's hiding inside. The Battle of Camelot left a permanent wound to the Kingdom of Camelot. Emperor Arthur, the first of his name, is dead. Without the wisdom of the lamented king and lacking a legitimate successor, the empire is shattering and the enemies are preparing to seize the moment. The Knights of the Round Table, the Sisters of Avalon and the Court of Camelot are seeking a monarch that will succeed Arthur. But the monarch must also have the favor of the common people. Will you earn their trust and respect with your deeds and lead Camelot to a new era? Or will you let it all be destroyed and burned to the ground by awakening the primordial enemies? In this game you play the role of a monarch. Choose between Queen Guinevere, Sir Lancelot, Lord Oberon and Lady Nimue and try to prove your worth by winning prestige points. The characters will travel in various locations included in the journey book. Each location has slots for speakers, characters the players will come across during the game and unique peril actions that players can take against each other. When you reach 10 prestige, you immediately win the game. The prestige points are on the scoring board where there are also two more attributes of the game. Happiness, that defines the turn order, and health, that defines the number of decision cards a player must have on their hands. There is also the time tracker, which defines the number of rounds based on the scene and the scenario cards you are playing. Each player chooses one of the four monarchs and places the components in front of them. They start with the basic form of their monarch face up and place their starting units and resources on their fifth area next to their decision deck. Each monarch has their individual decision cards with specific actions they can perform and individual personal goals to achieve. The decision cards are split in half. When you decide which decision card to play, slide that card under the character or under the leftmost or rightmost card of that side until only the relevant half part of the card is visible. This is called splaying a decision card. The personal goal cards describe specific character actions and when they complete one of their personal goals, the monarchs receive 4 prestige points. The tricky part is that the other players can also perform these actions on their turn in order to gain some benefits from them and at the same time to stall their opponents from completing their personal goals. There are two types of scenario cards per scene, narration cards and rule cards. Narration cards describe the events of the current scene and set the stage for the player's choices. The rule cards describe the setup of the scene, the special extra rules or actions and how to proceed to the next scene or how to get extra prestige points to win the game. There are four types of speakers and are summoned by the current scenario rule card. Each speaker has a unique planned action that can be activated during a player's turn. This action can be taken multiple times by paying the required cost each time. Monarchs of Camelot is a storytelling game that players determine how the story will unfold. This is done through voting and or based on the decisions they have made during the scenario. The game takes place on two levels. The first level is the decision cards that players will play and the actions they will perform to fulfill one of the two personal goals. The second level is the scenarios and the situations that involve the characters in their quest to claim the monarchy of Camelot. The game allows players to replay the same story from a different perspective, so each time they can go in a different direction and reach a different ending according to the decisions they have made. The game is played over a series of rounds, each consisting of a decision and an outcome phase. In the decision phase, during their turn, a player must play a decision card and then may do the following actions as many times as they wish and can afford. They can take any available action on one of the cards in their player area, take an available peril action on the journey book, take any action on a scenario or rule card and use the ability of an advisor. At the beginning of their turn, each player chooses a decision card to splay and activate each action on it from top to bottom. When a player splays the fourth card on the same side, the monarch has reached their culminating peak of glory. So, that monarch's card is replaced by their appropriate advanced form matching the art of the splayed decision cards that triggered it. The decision cards have different types of actions. Instant, contesting, planned, passive. Instant actions are activated once you splay the cards. Contesting actions can be activated only if you have the highest trait on the scoring board. Planned actions are activated when you place the corresponding resource on the decision card. Passive actions are reactions, or recurring actions that can be activated when the text is triggered. 
Both unit and resource tokens are used to activate the actions on the decision cards and to perform actions required on their personal goal cards. The unit tokens are soldiers, spies and advisors and the resource tokens are gold, magic and shield. Your character token is a special token that can be used as either your unit or as a resource token. After all players have taken turns, the outcome phase begins. During this phase, players will rearrange turn order according to the status of happiness on the scoring board, resolve the scenario cards and draw a decision card. To resolve the scenario cards, players check to see if they need to take a certain action or if the conditions of the scenario rules are met so as to proceed to the next scenario card and the story to evolve. This happens when players choose their path by voting, the time tracker has reached zero and the speaker has the needed resources. Every time players proceed to a new scenario card, the scene changes. Follow the scene's instructions to reveal the next scenario card, then reveal the new rules card mentioned on the narrative card and set up the new scene. The game goes on and players gain prestige points from the decision cards, the scenario cards and their personal goals. Whenever a player achieves one of their personal goals, they gain 4 prestige points. And when a player reaches 10 prestige, the game immediately ends and that player becomes the Monarch of Camelot. Now, let's take a look on the characters of the game. First is Queen Guinevere. By displaying cards on the left, you support Guinevere's personal goal to become the Empress and remove all three suitors from the game by using the Inner Circle card. By displaying cards on the right, you support her personal goal to become the White Lady and remove all soldiers from the Camelot's garrison. Then we move on to Sir Lancelot. By displaying cards on the left, you support Sir Lancelot's personal goal to become the Warden of Kingdom and complete all the parts of the legendary quest cards. By displaying cards on the right, you support his personal goal to become the Vindicator and remove all units from the Conspiracy card. Next is Lady Nimue. By displaying cards on the left, you support Lady Nimue's personal goal to become the Lady of the Lake and reach 8 stars on the Power Accession quest card. By displaying cards on the right, you support her personal goal to become the Camelot Stewardess and gather all 5 relics in her fifth. Next is Lord Oberon. By displaying cards on the left, you support Lord Oberon's personal goal to become the Rune Master and decipher all runes in his fifth. By displaying cards on the right, you support his personal goal to become the Weaver of the Dreams and have 10 units on the Spiral Doom card. Well, this was my story of Monarchs of Camelot. Until next time, take care and remember the famous words, I'd sooner be called a successful crook than a destitute monarch. <laughs>